Now, I'm joined now by Royal Commentator Jenny Bond to talk all about this. Jenny, thank you very much. Great to have you on the show. Look, there is a lot to unpack here, I think, about Harry and Meghan and whether or not this is a proper snub or whether or not the royal family didn't just want to find themselves in a situation where they were open to be said no to. I mean, it's quite the birthday present for Meghan Markle. <laughs> You do make me laugh. Um, yes, a splendid monologue, if I might say. Um, I think here you pays your money, you take to choice. I, some sources say that Harry and Meghan have snubbed the royal family by refusing an open invitation from Charles. And today's report says that it's the other way around. I don't know who snubbed who or what's going on. What I do know is that if they were to come over here, it would be hashtag mega orcs. It really would be an awkward situation. I have to remember the last time uh, that uh, Harry was up at Balmoral was the day of the Queen's death. He was the last to arrive. He felt he'd been snubbed then by not being allowed to be on the same plane as many of the other members of the family. He was the first to leave early in the morning. Um, things were clearly really bad there at that particular family reunion. I have no reason to think there'd be any better at a reunion this September. Yeah, no, exactly. But I mean, it just is a visible sign, isn't it? I think of the complete chasm now, complete chasm between the working members of the royal family and them. And it takes me back to that day, sadly, when our queen did pass and that big hoo-ha about whether or not Meghan was allowed to come and then Harry having to get a private jet. And I just think if you'd have cared a bit more for her in her final years anyway, in her final moments, then maybe you would have had an invite. I don't think he got a private jet, actually. I think he took EasyJet or something, up, a, a scheduled airline up to Balmoral, um, whereas the others went in a, in a private or Queen's flight jet. Um, what I think the case here is, is that time can be a great healer. We all know that. We all say, oh, time, time will heal everything. I think in this case, uh, it's not going to heal. In fact, I think positions have become so entrenched that the rest of family have just moved on. And uh, Charles, I... I I accept him a bit from this because he's the dad and he still loves his boy, obviously. But I think certainly between William and Harry, um, there is no going back. And it's just a fait accompli now that they don't talk. They have no intention of talking. The two families go their own ways. And I think that's how it's going to stay. And time is making that more certain. Um, I hope personally that Charles somehow reaches out in that awful American phrase, um, to his son and continues to say he wants to see him, because I think that's what a dad has to do. But I don't think Harry's making it easy. What about the fact that Andrew is going there? Because some people will be saying, well, hang on a minute, if we were going to snub everyone who was in some way disgraced or had helped to contribute towards a dark cloud hanging over the Queen's final days, then I suppose... Yeah, Air Miles Andy would maybe be somebody who should have missed out. Yes, but Charles has made it obvious that he wants to include his brother in family events. And this is a family event. And I think it would be quite churlish to exclude Sarah Ferguson, the Duchess of York, given that she's just had breast yeah. cancer and says she can't come. Yeah. So um, it's become a pattern now that at, at family events, Andrew and Sarah and their two children are invited. Mm. And we have to be pleased about that, surely. I mean, family harmony is better than family, a dysfunctional family. I, I really do think that this is a really good way of King Charles boosting his popularity because, unfortunately, it's a hard act to follow. I've used this analogy before. Usually most things can come back to footballing analogies. And following Sir Alex Ferguson was always going to be a poison chalice for whoever came in. David Moyes didn't last particularly long or fare particularly well. King Charles has got the world's hardest act to follow when it comes to our Queen. But I think showing some clear water between him and Harry is actually quite a good tactic now to boost him in the polls. Well, yeah, I think, as I said, they've moved on. They've gone away from the toxicity that Harry and Meghan seem to spread am amongst them. Um, and they've just let it go. I'm sure there's great sadness within the family that that's the case. But this happens in families, doesn't it? I'm, I have experience of, of family rifts where they, they'll, that rift will never be healed. And no. you just get on with life. And I think that's what Charles is doing. And, I, you know, I think it's clear that the majority, well, a, a large proportion of people in this country feel that 
Harry and Meghan are probably better where they are. We hope they're very happy. I hope she had a lovely birthday. Um, and we hope that they get on with their lives uh, happily ever after. Yeah, well, but, we'll uh, have to see. We'll have to see. I mean, in the next hour, I'm going to be playing a, a weird clip, actually, of Harry and Meghan doing some kind of charity giveaway. It's one of their first appearances together for quite a long time. There have been a lot of rumours which they've denied about the strength of their relationship or otherwise, some solo tours and events taking place. The brand of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex has taken a right royal kicking when it comes to every single business venture they seem to have tried. So, yes, whether or not they realise now that they might be better apart than together, we'll have to wait and see. But, Jenny, thank you very much. Jenny Bond, who is the royal commentator, always a fabulous addition. What a way to start any show, by having the wonderful Jenny Bond rocking up at the top.